Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the exchange-traded funds and how a lot of them are posting steep declines within the cannabis industry, uh, but long-term prospects appear bright. So there's some cannabis-focused exchange-traded funds that have emerged over the past few years in the US and Canada and now Europe, but in recent uh, months or the last year, there's been some sharp declines that have mirrored the tumbling cannabis stocks and made it tougher for some exchange traded fund operators to attract investors. So some of the ETFs are down about 50% compared to this time last year. The pressure of such a decline has been that some funds, such as the Evolved Marijuana Fund on the Toronto Stock Exchange and a related U.S.-focused cannabis fund on the Toronto Exchange, they fall by the wayside and closed. So Tim Seymour is the owner and manager of Amplify Seymour Cannabis ETFs. They launched a New York Stock Exchange fund that controls about $7.5 million in assets under management and said that raising money has been challenging in the past nine months and they would have preferred to have started the ETF uh, in July of the previous year. This isn't necessarily deterring ETF managers from unveiling new products. So Rise Medical Cannabis and Life Science ETFs, they're launching on three different European stock exchanges. The purpose of an exchange traded fund or index is to kind of limit your exposure or risk by you know, buying into a portfolio of companies. But when all of them are going down, it makes it pretty difficult. Uh, so from, you know, my E-Trade account, we've got 19 stocks here from our own AI-based cannabis index. All of them are negative today, and yet we're probably going to pull out uh, some positive weekly results. And you'll have to come back and take a look at that episode. But uh, basically, uh, our AI robot is able to take what looks to be catastrophic uh, uh, numbers here and make some positivity out of it. And just by comparison, overall, we've had a 38% uh, return since August. So even though the market is going up and down um, and, and hasn't been that well for other companies, we're still doing pretty well by comparison. So 38% since August, uh, looking at, you know, a comparison to the ETFMG Alternative Harvest Index, ticker symbol MJ, as well as POTX. Uh, during that same time frame, ETFMG was down 46%, POTX was down 44 to our positive 38%, so over an 80% difference. So looking at year to date, uh, MJ is down almost 20%. Podex is down over 20%. Um, they're down negative 22 and, and three quarters, but we are up over 4%. So again, you know, that's going to be uh, a 20, 25% swing uh, just year to date. So the advantages of an artificial, artificial intelligence based algorithm that has technical analysis, predictive analytics is going to be, you know, a, a lifesaver for a lot of investors, a lot of people uh, rather than just buy and hold in these indexes, you're going to want uh, machine learning to kind of help create a better return that you can see from our index. Right now, unfortunately, it's only available to accredited and institutional investors, but hopefully within the next year, we'll be publicly traded so that you can buy into this, uh, you know, the average person. And so just looking at the index that we have and the changes, Tilray's down 16%, Aurora's down 12%, uh, but that means that our, our robot will probably buy these at this low rate, maybe wait a day, maybe wait an hour or a week or a month and then sell it. So there's opportunities as you know uh, prices come down, uh, but to take advantage of those opportunities requires either an expert or an artificial intelligence based robot. There's been some short term pessimism in the industry. Um, and you can see that in the ETFMG, they had almost a billion dollars in assets under management that decreased down to about 650. And I think they're somewhere in like the $700 million range. So maybe that's a good sign that there's still a demand uh, for people who are looking for the next Amazon or, you know, the next Microsoft or whatever uh, their speculation is, you know, they're going to be able to jump into those and hopefully see some, uh, some increases, but I don't think we've even begun to see the volatility that the overall global market is going to see. And initially cannabis isn't going to be any different. There's going to be margin calls, which drops the price of everything. So that systemic risk means that the entire markets are going to collapse as margin calls force liquidations. But eventually, vice stocks outperform all other stocks 
And I think we're going to see a global depression very, very soon. And so maybe we'll see a pop in some of these stocks similar to uh, what we've seen in the past. You look at 2000 and 2010 and look at vice stocks or sin stocks uh, that have done very well. So defensive stocks, um, you look at tobacco and alcohol, cannabis, all of those will, should have an inverse relationship uh, to the overall market. And so you can buy now an average cost, you know, dollar cost averaging on the way down. Uh, if you're trying to time the market, who knows when, but I think it looks fairly depressed. And some of those stocks won't remain. They're going to go out of business or they'll file bankruptcy if they can. Um, and so owning an index kind of limits your risk to those individual uh, volatilities from the underlying securities, uh, just knowing that some of them aren't going to make it uh, through the end of the year. Some of the U.S. operators are showing terrific growth and the upside potential is outrageously huge, according to somebody. Uh, but all that's going to take is a 1% drop in commercial property rates for some of those REITs or real estate investment trusts to plummet. Uh, MedMen being one of those multi-state operators who have relied on uh, real estate to make up for a terrible play on the uh, agricultural commodity side. And I think a lot of the, the Canadian LPs are going to find it incredibly difficult to, to stay relative as well. Uh, there's an article that just kind of goes into how there's a reality check for Canadian cam cannabis companies as the capital crunch makes lower cost growing nations more attractive. Uh, Canada is probably not the best place to grow, you know, um, and neither is Jamaica. But for a U.S. company, they might want to look at Puerto Rico, uh, being that Puerto Rico doesn't have corporate taxes. Um, makes sense to, to pay a 4% corporate tax cap at that level for research and development, bilingual call centers and manufacturing, uh, any R&D. Um, that would be a, a spot, especially if you're a California based, uh, Puerto Rico is going to save you 25, 26%. Um, and so in my opinion, companies that don't have an entity in Puerto Rico won't even be uh, alive long enough to talk about it. It'll just be kind of a war story about how they tried to make it and, and couldn't. So Puerto Rico is going to be saving grace for a lot of those companies who are just manufacturing a product who don't have margins uh, available to them to remain a going concern or, or stay in business. A lot of them are going to go to the wayside uh, as some of these individual securities will go out of bankrupt or will go out of business. So this article goes in to say that given how young the industry generally is and how difficult it is to predict changes ahead, including where companies might fall, uh, there is need to actively manage such funds unless you have an AI-based algorithm that's managing that for you. Um, so kind of stepping up that game from active versus passive, uh, I think is, um, you know, uh, beyond is, is, is in the past. We're looking at machine learning, artificial intelligence based algorithms. And uh, you can just see from from the percentage differences that there is no comparison. 38% versus negative 44% um, is pretty old school to, to talk about a, a, an active portfolio. Um, they should just be reverting to artificial intelligence based algorithms. Um, the one we have has been in, in use for three years, an annual average return of 42% compared to the S&P's annual average of 15%. Uh, we're doing pretty good. We do miss out on some appreciation because the risk is too high. We've missed out in some cases 25% gains because the risk just wasn't worth it. So we will lose four and three quarters or 5% before that, that stop loss has, has been triggered. Um, but nonetheless, we're still on a positive overall. So we can take short uh, temporary losses. Uh, but, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, we do much better uh, and are positive. So right here, you can see that we took, you know, a 7.5% loss on uh, Arena Pharmaceuticals that equated to $4,500. So out of a million, that's not too bad. We took another $7,000 loss on Canopy. That was 4.9%, but we are buying and selling. This is trading. So on that particular trade, we did lose, but there are other trades that make up for that. So this is a, this is a game where just every day kind of add to that, which is how we're up 38% since August. Um, it's been a rough year to date so far, but Again, we're still positive when everyone else is negative. Now, we only have an, a million in assets under management. It gets more and more difficult uh, to allocate that once you get, you know, three quarters of a billion dollars, 
makes it much more difficult to manage those funds when you start getting to a billion dollars, but just means you need to increase the number of opportunities or securities that that AI uh, algorithm can invest in, which is what we have planned. So the old adage was that uh, in an area like cannabis, an active management is extremely important as opposed to blindly following an index. Uh, I would say that that is an old school philosophy where active was better than passive, except, you know, we have technology now. We have artificial intelligence, we have machine learning, and they're much smarter than these individual investors, uh, even with or without that risk tolerance that they have. Uh, we don't look at the emotions behind it. So it's technical analysis without the emotions. All of these ETF managers are agreeing that they need to invest in the industry for the long term because long term indicators, including the increasing global attraction and acceptability of the cannabis product, are much brighter than the current market conditions. So macro conditions continue to get better and better. Uh, while there is some unlikely to be a federal descheduling in the U.S. anytime soon, things are going to be better and could be expected on the state side. They actually have a better story than they did a, a year ago, uh, but that's not really reflecting in these returns. So there's still a lot of speculation in the industry and exchange traded funds are probably uh, a little bit overused. So Jim Cramer um, had mentioned on CNBC um, during Mad Money that he felt exchange traded funds have reached kind of a precipice where there's just too many of them. And I would absolutely agree there's too many derivatives in general, too many indexes, too many exchange traded funds that aren't unique, that uh, aren't able to really give you a return on your investment that's worth it, which is why this artificial intelligence-based algorithm makes even more sense. Um, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves, really. When you have 80% better, um, a lot of people are gonna say, well, that's too good to be true, that's not gonna happen long-term, and yet it, it has. We have three years experience with an average return of 42%. Um, I just think that uh, people haven't caught up to what we're doing, um, but we're just gonna have to, keep proving them wrong, you know, week by week, month by month. And um, a lot of these guys are going to end up losing as that systemic risk adds up. We haven't seen the volatility quite yet, not as bad as it's going to be. I'm not really sure how much longer these companies are going to be able to take the beating that they're seeing. Just today, for example, every single stock in our index is down by a tremendous amount. Uh, Aurora and Tilray absolutely getting hammered. Uh, even IIPR in real estate isn't getting away from this. Everyone is being affected. This is entire systemic risk. The entire industry is getting hammered uh, because they're not showing that there's profitability. And so if you don't have a profit model, if you haven't quite figured it out yet, uh, everyone is going to be taking a hit. So it's going to take uh, an AI-based algorithm to be able to sift through uh, with the lack of emotions to find the right opportunities and to continue to generate profits, which is what we're currently doing. Uh, and so if you do think it's good, too good to be true, let me know in the show notes. I'd like to know what your opinions are. Uh, I just think that uh, with enough time, we are going to continue to show that our model is working um, and the, the competition is going to have to either license that from us or they're going to go to the wayside like some indexes already have. They've already closed. They've already figured out that they either came too late or they just don't have uh, the appropriate traders uh, or they just don't have the AI. So uh, there is opportunities. I wouldn't be as risky to say that you should be buying into any individual security. Way too early for that. A lot of these companies could go bankrupt like Tilray, like Aurora, like any of these LPs who expect $1.74 per gram. Trading, absolutely, trade away. You know, there's money, but there is no investment. I wouldn't invest your money in any one of these companies. Uh, but I would advise that if you are accredited investor or institutional investor, to take a look at our AI-based index because numbers speak for themselves. So with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out.